Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm gonna give everyone just a minute to get signed in as your computers are letting you log in and then we will get started. Just a few more seconds so we can make sure everyone's logging in. Okay, it looks like most everyone has, um, has been able to get in, at least the majority, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Dawn Samples, and welcome to today's webinar. This is our day six out of seven free live webinars that we're bringing to you with the Mississippi Foreign Language Association. We have a very special guest with us today. We have Akash Patel, who's the CEO of the Happy World Foundation. I'm gonna introduce him more in just a second. I do want to give you guys just a little bit of information as we get started. So see if my mouse will work for me here. Okay. So um, I'm the director for Avant More Learning, and More Learning is um, like the professional learning division at Avant Assessment. MORE stands for More Learning Opportunities Reaching Everyone. So we're so happy that we could be here with you today again. Um, we do wanna make sure that you guys are able to follow along. So make sure that as you are tweeting today about today's webinar and you're learning that you are tagging the Mississippi Foreign Language Association at MFLA underscore. Um, and also want to just make sure that you guys know you will get a certificate of attendance for being here and joining us live today. Um, at the end of the webinar, a window will pop up for you and you will be able to, or you have, may have to click on a link and the window will pop up. Um, so you can do a brief survey and at the end of the survey, there will be a link in the message where you can access that certificate. If you miss it today or you don't have time to do the survey today, don't worry. Tomorrow you will get an email and in that email tomorrow, you'll have access to the survey. You'll have access to your certificate and you'll also be able to access the PDF of today's chat. Um, obviously you can also follow along on Twitter and you can go back at any point and follow all of our webinar discussions on Twitter at the hashtag empowering with languages. Um, this record, this video webinar is being recorded. So it will be uploaded on our YouTube for you. So just wanna make sure you guys know all those things. And I will also be posting some of that in the chat for you. So you'll know um, as we go through the webinar, what you will have access to. So I am going to go ahead and introduce our Twitter and chat moderators and partners for these webinars. Um, I'd like to welcome Michael Raines and Edgar Serrano. Both are um, board members for the Mississippi Foreign Language Association. Edgar is the executive director. Welcome, Edgar. Welcome everybody. Thank you, Don. And uh, thank you so much for spending your Friday and summer time with us uh, today. Uh, thank you to Don and, and Advance for helping make this webinar possible. And Akash and to the Happy World Foundation, thank you for helping us connect to the world with just a simple click. Michael? Welcome everyone. Um, we're glad that you're back with us today and I'm sure that you're going to really enjoy this presentation uh, from Akash and his visitors. Thanks. Great. Thank you both. Um, Akash is a very sought after presenter and we're so happy, Akash, that you are joining us today. Um, Akash is a Spanish teacher in Dallas Independent School District, but he's also the CEO and founder of the Happy World Foundation. And I think part of his mission is bringing communities and learners and students from around the world together. So without further ado, Akash, I am gonna let you take over and we are gonna learn from you. Terrific. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody, uh, wherever you are in the United States. It's an honor to be here with uh, MFLA and with Avant. So Don, Edgar, Michael, thank you so much for the invitation. 
I'm so looking forward to uh, speaking to you guys and introducing you to three of my very special guests today who are here with us, who are going to be unmuting themselves in the next few minutes. But before they get in, before they get in, I want to introduce the mini lesson because I'm going to start off today's presentation by doing a lesson, showing you, demonstrating a lesson on what Edgar just mentioned. You could connect to the world with a simple click and live and for free. So here this afternoon, I have three ladies, uh, women leaders. They are from different parts of the globe. And your task, teachers, is to find out where they're from. So we're going to be playing Mystery Hangout in the next few minutes. So what I want you to do in the chat, ask questions that will help me find out where they're from. You cannot ask questions like, hey, are you from India or are you from Australia? You want to ask questions about their culture, their, um, their history, their background, their democracies, their government. I mean, you could ask anything that's meaningful that could lead you to the answer. You could ask a geographical question. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Like you could ask them questions like, what's the currency you use in your country? You could ask them, do you live north or south of the equator? So I'm gonna give you the next three minutes to brainstorm questions you're gonna ask my three presenters or three co-panelists from three different parts of the world to find out where they're from. They're from three different parts of the world. So this is one of our signature programs that we offer at our nonprofit for free. We have over 1,500 volunteers from 150 countries that speak tens, on, tens of languages, the, any language that you possibly could teach in American classrooms. So I want to demo this lesson first so you can see how students would get all excited and pumped up. They want to find out where this person is from. And then you can lead them into a conversation about the theme for the day. So let's say you're teaching an AP classroom and they're talking about health or they're talking about climate change or they're talking about uh, types of governments in different countries. You could use these speakers to talk and enlighten you on that particular topic for the next few minutes after you have guessed what country they're from. Again, all of this is gonna happen in target language. So you're gonna use target language. Let's say you're in a Spanish classroom, you're gonna ask questions in Spanish. You're in a French classroom, you're gonna ask questions in French to find out where they're from. So let's get started. I'm gonna look at the chat box to see what questions do we have for our three speakers and then I'm gonna introduce them to come in. So David has a question, what is the weather like in your country? Terrific. Do you speak Tagalog or what other languages do you speak? That could be a great question. Hey, what, what languages do they speak in your country? Do they have any indigenous languages? Um, I don't speak French, so I don't know if that's a French question. I wish I could. So today our target language in this class is going to be English, except for one speaker who only speaks Spanish. So I'm gonna interpret those questions in Spanish for her. But other than that, uh, we, our target language in this particular mini lesson for the next 10 minutes is going to be English. So uh, let's see, what, what do you eat for breakfast? What food is considered typical? What are, uh, are your elections held on a Sunday or weekend? What kind of weather do you have? What are the colors of your flag? Is your country on the coast or an island? What's your currency? What is your president's name? What is your biggest holiday? What hemisphere? Oh my goodness, that's a lot of questions. That's lots of, lots of great questions. Keep getting those questions in. I'm gonna introduce our three speakers. So to get started, we have, uh, let me make sure they're all in. We're gonna get started with Elisa. Elisa Yahimi is oh, a yeah. Fulbright scholar. I'm not gonna say anything else about her. Otherwise it's gonna give out where she's from. So Elisa, thank you so much for being here. Katie Torres, again, I don't even wanna introduce them or tell you what they do because you probably wanna find out where they're from. So Katie is also here with us. Katie, you can unmute yourself now and say hello to everybody. And Elisa, uh, you can both keep your mics unmuted now. And Sofia, Sofia, vamos a hacerte preguntas en el español, entonces no te preocupes, los maestros y las maestras van a intentar de hacerte preguntas para, para uh, adivinar de dónde eres, ¿ok? Perfecto, hola. Ok, hola Sofía, hello Katie, uh, hello Elisa. Hi everyone. Say the language that Elisa speaks because it might give it out. All right, let's get started. Vamos a hacer, hacerles a ustedes la primera pregunta y Sofía, uh, puedes, uh, puedes hablar porque uh, no tienes que tener tu audio apagado, ¿ok? 
Okay, okay. Vale, muchas gracias. Okay. Vamos a empezar con la primera pregunta. We'll start with the first question. Uh, okay. I'm going to go down here. Uh, the question is, who is a famous artist in your country? Katie? Oh, oh my God. This one is very easy. Um, <laughs> Don't give, don't give them a famous artist. Give them a not so famous artist. Okay, okay. I'm gonna think about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> wait. Uh, I forgot. Okay. Right now is Camilo. Okay, Camilo. All right. Sofia, artista famoso, de famoso o famosa de tu país. Um, artista famoso de mi país. Um, Gustavo Cerati. Okay. Elisa. Um, um, I would say Charles Nevour. Okay. All right. Next question. Okay. For you guys. Uh, it, it, okay. Questions. I do see some questions in Spanish, but let's make sure the questions are in English. So uh, I'm going to go down to some of the questions. Oh my goodness. There's so many questions. What food do you eat to celebrate your birthday? Okay. Katie, what food do you eat on your birthday? Anything typical of your country that you eat on your birthday? Okay. Uh, it's not very typical for my country, but we used to eat uh, tacos. Um, I can say um, empanadas. Empanadas. And, uh, and like we do barbecues, so that's what we do in my birthday. Okay, Elisa? Um, I love that kind of cheese that's called raclette on top of potatoes and with some ham on the, on the side. Sofia, una comida típica que comes en tu cumpleaños. Una comida, eh, empanadas o asado. Asado o empanadas. All right, very good. And Katie, you can leave yourself unmuted so you won't go off the screen, the webinar screen. So thank you so much. The next question, what other languages do they speak in your country, Katie? Um, we speak Spanish and uh, the indigenous world speak indigenous. So, okay. uh, yeah. Elisa? So the main language is French and then there are some dialects like from Corsica or like Breton or Normand. Okay. Sofia, idioma, uh, uh, idioma, yeah, idiomas que hablan en tu país, perdón. Um, el idioma oficial es el español y después se enseñan otros idiomas en las escuelas, pero no hay otro idioma oficial. Okay, Spanish is the official language. Next question is, um, what are some common foods in your country? Okay, we, we just spoke about what food do you eat, so let me take another question. A popular music in your country, música popular en tu país. Vamos a empezar con Sofía. Sofía. Um, música popular en, en mi país diría pop latino y reggaeton. Okay, pop latino y reggaeton. Elisa. We have what we call variété, and we also have, um, I guess, R&B. Okay. That's really popular. Um, we, well, in my city, we live a lot of salsa, and kind of like vallenato. Vallenato is typical for my country. So you, you only hear it from, I mean, my country. <laughs> All right, the next question is, are you north or south of the equator? Si tu país queda norte o sur del Ecuador? Okay. Um, Elisa? I'm north of the equator. North. Katie? I'm south. South of the equator. Okay, yeah. Sofia? Al sur del Ecuador. Okay, al sur. Muy bien. Okay. Um, is your country surrounded by seas or oceans? So, Katie? Well, it's surrounded by two oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. Terrific. Elisa? Yeah, we have the Mediterranean Sea, we have the North Sea, and we have the Atlantic Ocean. Sofia, si tu país queda cerca de un mar o océano? Mi país queda cerca del océano Atlántico. Océano Atlántico. Océano Atlántico, sí, sí. Okay. Um, ah, no, president's name might give it away. So you know what? I'll leave it, leave it right there. What is the currency they use in your country? Katie? Um, can you uh, define me what is currency? Uh, um, moneda. Little... Moneda que usan oh, en tu país. Okay. Mm -hmm. Peso. <laughs> Peso. Very good. Elisa? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. What currency do they use in your country? So we have, the, we use the Euro. Euro, okay. So are you talking about the country you're from or you're from like, you know, 
both the countries use euro no so yeah i'm from I'm, i have like two countries one use euro and the other so the currency is dinar and the, that country is also north of the ecuador okay sofia en tu país cuál es la moneda que usan el peso el peso all right let's look at the chat there's some people uh, giving out that hey Elisa could be from france uh i hear somebody saying colombia switzerland germany argentina okay interesting all right i'm going to take a couple more questions okay before we let them guess so we're going and then we're going to go down one at a time we'll start by guessing katie's then Elisa, sofia's so uh here i have a couple other questions a typical celebration or tra tradition in your country Elisa? we don't work may 1st because it's labor day Okay. <laughs> I think parts of the United States, you still work if it's not a holiday in your particular state. So, Katie? Okay, this one, uh, when we start Christmas, uh, we celebrate the day of the candle. So, okay. it's celebrated on December 7th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sofia, una tradición de tu país. Um, el 9 de julio es el día de la independencia y nos juntamos en familia a comer, a festejar. Okay, in July they have, they celebrate their independence and they get together with their family to celebrate. Okay, uh, what's the most famous festival in your country? Let's say, okay, oh, this one's a great one. ¿Cuáles son los colores de tu bandera? What are the colors of your flag? Sofía? Eh, celeste y blanca. Celeste y blanco, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, she said it's light blue and white. Elisa? So blue, white, and red, and the other country is green, red, white. Green, red, and white. Blue, red, white, and red is easy to guess, but the other one's quite hard. I think they, they're not going to get it. Katie? Um, is yellow, blue, and red. And you know, Katie, a lot of countries have those three colors, don't they? Yeah. A yeah, lot of countries have those three colors. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are right at that time. It's 12.18. So their segment was about 10 minutes. So we are going to still take a couple more questions. I'm going down the chat to ask them a couple more questions. So here's your chat. And I'm taking a couple more questions. So you can go ahead and drop in a question if you like. Oh, what, is this, what does school look like in your country? How school? How school different from school? You may not know what school is like in the United States, but tell us a little bit about school in your country. Elisa? So we don't have, it's not like a K, it's kind of K-12 system, but we have the first kind of school, which is preschool from three to five, and then another school, that's the elementary school, and then middle school, which is again another school, and then high school. So we change like three times at least. Um, the building and the school. Interesting. Katie? Uh, well, in Colum Ah. <laughs> okay, you okay, haven't no. said it. You okay. haven't said it. It's okay. okay. Okay, so what we do, we stay in one school. We don't <laughs> change. We stay, like, in the same one. So it's like uh, you meet the same professors, like, uh, the whole your life. You know what I mean? Like, we stay in the same school. So we didn't change. And we, uh, they teach us like religion, philosophy, ethics, and, um, and like physics and chemistry. Elisa? Oh, Elisa already mentioned. Yes, Katie, thank you. Thank you, Katie. The next question is, uh, I'll take one last question, okay? And then uh, we're going to go ahead and start guessing your countries. Is it winter in your country right now? Katie? No, actually, we don't have any season. In the city that you live or in the country that you live, you have no season? We don't have seasons. Nope. Oh, wow. Interesting. No seasons in their country. It's Sofia, si hay estaciones y si ustedes están uh, de invierno o verano en este momento. ¿Cómo me puedes repetir? Uh, si ustedes están de verano o el invierno en este momento. Es invierno. Invierno, it's invierno, okay. So it's winter in Sofia's country, whereas it's summer right here in the United States. Elisa? It's summer in both of my countries. In both of your countries, it's summer yeah. right now. All right. So guys, without much ado, we're going to start guessing. 
first I'm gonna introduce to you uh, the first person that I see you see on the screen right here is Katie Torres. So Katie, uh, you wanna just rave again and I wanna see in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, start guessing. Katie said her country, they use pesos. She spoke a little bit about the, um, uh, about the music they listen to, a famous artist from her country. A lot of people are saying in there, Colombia. Yes, a lot of people have gotten that right. Katie is from Colombia. Thank you so much. So Katie, yes, you're from Colombia. Elisa, let's talk about Elisa. Elisa is from two countries. Both the countries speak French. What country is Elisa from? France is one. Yes, Miss Allison Baskin. Uh, France and Algeria. Yay, you've got some representation of French teachers here. We figured out you're from Algeria. We've got quite a few... Uh, teachers who have guessed you're from France, or oh, some guessed Morocco, which is close too. Yeah, uh, we're neighbors. <laughs> yes, neighbors. So Algeria and France is where Elisa's from. And Sofia, let's guess where Sofia is from. Sofia's, the color of the flags are Celeste y Blanco. So that's light blue and uh, white. A whole bunch of people have gotten it right. It's Argentina. Yes, she's from Argentina. She could be from Uruguay. Some people guessed Uruguay. Uh, very interesting. We've got a great group of teachers that did a great job of guessing. Now, teachers, before I let these three fantastic leaders go, uh, let me just tell you that your students are not going to have the background knowledge. They're not going to have the geographical knowledge needed to do this. So you guys guessed in less than 10 minutes. Your students may take 20. They may take 25 minutes, but hey, who cares? As long as they're using target language, they're participating in a conversation. They have a competitive edge. I had students who wanted to know their latitude and longitude. I mean, that's a little creepy, but you know, they wanted to get to the fact that, oh, I wanna know Elisa's latitude and longitude points. And they took their Chromebooks and they, they wanted to get there. So it's a great way to not just teach them social studies and geography here. You're teaching a lot of culture, uh, lots of authentic authenticity in this. And we have these speakers for you available because I call them an army of John Lennons, uh, an army of folks who believe in a world without borders. So these are just three of our incredible volunteers. We have hundreds of them who are giving their time, especially right now because of the pandemic and the closures. So I just want you to take this moment and say thank you in a language of your choice in the chat to Katie, Elisa, and Sophia for their time this morning so we can bid them adieu. So Katie, Sophia, and um, Elisa, muchas gracias, obrigado, um, merci beaucoup. I speak some French, so merci beaucoup for your time. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you three have a fantastic day, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very gracias. much. Nos vemos. Gracias, nos vemos luego. Chao, que les vaya Ciao. bien. All right, so the rest of us, we're gonna go ahead and dive into how you could bring the same experience back into your classroom. So I wanted to start with a mini lesson because I don't want people to think that this is some rocket science and this takes too much effort. This is really quite easy. Like Edgar said, you touch with the touch, just like you touch your phone and call somebody, that's how easy it is. And that's why I want, you to introduce, I want to introduce you guys to this lesson that you can modify the way you like. You can change this from a mystery hangout to something else. You can turn it into a grand conversation about health, about climate change, about an issue of your choice, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started with some of the slides and we're gonna have some time for a Twitter chat and we'll take a break. But I hope you enjoyed that mini lesson and I hope you will bring this to your classroom in the fall, regardless of how your schools plan to reopen. So I'm a Spanish teacher, but I did not learn Spanish as a child. I learned Spanish as a 21 year old. I came to the United States with my twin brother in the year 2009. So I'm celebrating almost a decade of being in the United States. And we came to study nuclear engineering, but we didn't end up becoming nuclear engineers. We knew that this was not our passion. We knew this was not for us. So at the end of the first semester, we ran off, we bought an old car and we ran off to Oklahoma where an uncle lived and we pursued our associates. I pursued my associates in liberal studies. My brother did his associates in business that then graduated with a bachelor's in education, a master's in educational leadership and policy studies. So, 
here I am in rural Oklahoma, where I first started student teaching in small cities like Chickasha, Rush Springs, Ninaka, towns that had a few hundred people in population. So people had never seen someone like me. So for them, it was such a culture shock that, oh boy, who's this guy who's teaching in our small town? So many a times they would invite me to their rodeos and I would go to their rodeos dressed up in the cowboy boots and cowboy hat that they gave me. And they would all think I was a Mexican cowboy. So I just thought it was so funny and that I would have adults striking conversations with me at small restaurants, asking me questions like, hey, you're from India. I bet you can see elephants in the streets in India. And because they were adults, I could joke with them and they were my friends. So I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. You can see elephants in the streets in India. It depends on how much you've been drinking. Now, again, those were adults. I can have that conversation. But that brings me to something that I had of Oklahoma. I had deep stereotypes of Oklahoma. I only read that when you go to Oklahoma at the Will Rogers Airport, you're probably going to see cowboys and teepees. And, you know, that stereotype that people have of Oklahoma from the movies they have seen. And then people had stereotypes of me, that this guy's from India. I bet they have certain stereotypes of a person who looks like me, who's this skin colored. So I realized that we all have stereotypes. Folks had stereotypes of me. I had stereotypes of them. But we can dispel these stereotypes. Let me repeat this. We can dispel these stereotypes before they manifest into racism, bigotry, or prejudice. So we as language teachers, our task is not just to teach them the language. I, we have a greater task. We have to help students preview their misconceptions about other cultures, dispel any stereotypes, and treat everyone the same, which is a very powerful way of promoting global citizenship and fighting bigotry, racism, and prejudice right in our classrooms. So that's what I did. I created a nonprofit movement. I started with my rural classrooms. I realized I was fortunate and privileged to have traveled to over 50 countries. I knew people all around the globe. And I was like, how do I bring these people to my small rural classrooms where people have not traveled anywhere? So I was like, let me use Facebook video calling. I started video calling my friends on Facebook, on uh, Google Hangout, and then we started using Skype, Zoom, all kinds of platforms. We started with a small group of maybe 50 volunteers, and today we have turned it into a movement of over 1,500 volunteers from 150 countries that will video call your classrooms for free. And that's the most important thing, that we, we don't charge a dime for any of this. So I want to just briefly introduce you to our, uh, to our journey. I started this journey called Global Experiences, World Experiences, which is now called Happy World Foundation, with small lessons that I taught about my culture, because I thought it's important for me to share my story with the kids. So I shared my work with elephants and mapping of elephant DNA to studying poaching patterns. Then I shared with them my work in Costa Rica, working with 100,000 sea turtles, and video called some folks in Costa Rica who could show them live and take them on a live virtual tour. So ladies and gentlemen, we don't just offer speakers, we also offer tour guides for free, who, authors, or for folks who say, oh, we don't have money, we've got a big budget cut. We can't take our students to the zoo this year, or we can't take them to our regular field trip this year. We will offer you somebody who will give you a tour of the Taj Mahal, or will give you a tour of a rural community in Colombia. So bringing that authenticity back into your classroom. So I started right there and then I created this Global Connect database in 2014. So started with 50 volunteers. Now we have connected thousands of students across the country. So we have authors and I wanna introduce you to some of the things. So this is right where we finished a mini lesson. We're gonna do a quick Twitter chat check-in. So uh, at this point, Don, how, how many minutes do we have here? We are about half an hour in right now. Okay. So we're doing good. Do you want to stop and have a little bit of a chat to check in right now? Or do you want sure, to I think this is, a, uh, this is a great moment to, uh, and uh, uh, dear teachers, you can follow our nonprofit too. Like I'm going to towards the end share our nonprofit handles, but my particular nonprofit, uh, I'm going to share it in the chat, the two Twitter handles. So meanwhile, please, you can take this moment, a couple minutes to do a quick Twitter check-in, a Twitter chat. Can you explain? Some people are a little confused, Miss Dawn. Sure. Yes. <laughs> so those of you in the chat, um, the, you're the, you've been asking questions of, from our mystery guests, which was 
incredible and awesome. In the Twitter feed, um, that's where if you are logged in on Twitter, you can follow Akash. Um, and if you follow MFLA or more learning, I have been tagging him in some of the feeds on Twitter. So you can, if you look for one of those, you'll see your at speaker Akash Twitter account. Um, and you can follow that by going to hashtag empowering with languages. So if you want to follow along what some of the, the people out there in the Twitter world have been have been sharing um, and I'll let Edgar report on that in just a second. That's one way you, that you can go back and follow both. Um, Edgar, do you want to share a little bit what we're seeing on Twitter? Yes, Don, they, I think uh, everybody's blown away with all these ideas. They are just so happy and they're just so ready to start uh, using uh, all these uh, native speakers in their classroom. And they also point out the importance of really breaking stereotypes. So just connecting the, the, your classroom to the world really has a huge impact. And how is it? It's just with a click. So uh, everybody's just blown away and so happy to be able to be part of this webinar. It's very, very exciting. Um, Michael, would you like to report out a little bit what we've been seeing in the chat? Oh, super amount of uh, excitement there. One of the questions that I did see that I uh, thought was important was they wanted to know where you get your volunteers or how you get your volunteers. <laughs> That's a fantastic question because I get that asked now that we have done this for over six years, people ask me, oh, are these going to be crazy people that have not been background checked? So our biggest source mm -hmm. is through educators and through educator networks, through universities. So we background check these individuals if they're in the United States or in other countries through references. So we have never had an issue in the thousands of calls we have facilitated. When you go to our Facebook page and you look at the thousands of calls we have facilitated over the last few years, we've never had an issue with a volunteer doing something wrong. It's usually always a student saying something inappropriate or a student making some inappropriate comment to the speaker. So that's why, you know, over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to dive you into how could you prepare your students for an activity like this? And we have no limits. You can request a speaker every other day. You can request a speaker once a month. I mean, and I will show you step by step how you can do this. Like by, you can simply do it by sending us a WhatsApp message. You can do it by sending us a DM on Twitter. You can do it by sending us a DM on our Facebook page, or you can do it by sending us an email. I think you're going to be hearing from a lot of people. <laughs> the excitement <laughs> level is pretty, it's pretty intense out there. So people are excited and I think they're trying to think of, you know, ways to engage their learners next year. And in a virtual setting, this is a perfect scenario to be able to do that. So it's very, very exciting. And I just dropped in our Facebook page uh, link, but again, all these links are going to be in the presentation. Uh, you can go ahead and look at what we did last month, uh, hundreds of pictures from last month from all across the United States, from Virginia, Arizona, Washington, California. We have teachers who use our database in their classroom. So I'll be sharing plenty of resources in the next 20 minutes. So you are well prepared. So when you leave this, you're not gonna be like, oh, I don't know how to do any of this. Akash can do this, no, I can do this too. And I'm going to bring this to my school and I'm also going to bring it to my neighbor. So all our children have access to quality global experiences. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Right, Don? Sure. Okay. So uh, Don, uh, if you could give me access to the presentation so I can. Yes, I think you actually have access. Okay. Um, let me go in and see. Okay. I, so you, um, you have the, let me make sure you have the mouse. I think you do. Yes. Okay, let's look at some permission. Okay. We'll Do you that. want to um, go back into the slideshow? And that's a, a, another great question. Our volunteers will never photograph your students. So we've never had this issue. I've worked with so many school districts across the country. They've never had to seek permission. Now you only seek permission. Let's say if you're doing something like this, if you see this presentation, this slide that you're seeing on my screen, I took pictures of my students engaging with volunteers from Brazil that you see three of them to the right. So I had permission slips for them, but if you don't wanna take pictures, then you don't need permission slips. This is an activity that's been going on through reputed organizations like ours, like Empatico, like Skype in the Classroom, like Google Classroom, 
they have resources like this and they've been doing this for almost a decade. So yes, if you need permission, you will only need it in the event you're photographing some of your students with the volunteer because you wanna share that with your district, with your PR department, with your principal, with somebody. Just like I'm using it right now because I have to have this evidence so our donors can fund my nonprofit. And I have to have this evidence so I can train new teachers to use our database. So towards the left, you can see my first video call with a classroom in India and orphanage where the kids performed a cultural dance from India. And my kids said, I wanna do something too. And back then I was teaching a bilingual fourth grade classroom. So they were like, Mr. Patel, what can we do that's American? And back then I couldn't think of anything. So they just, they just put on, on YouTube, the Harlem Shake, and they shook it to the Harlem Shake. I don't know if any of you guys remember the Harlem Shake. It was quite popular back then, not anymore. But here, here's just a picture of, and yes, I will be providing a link to the database uh, Don, I do not see the option for me to move to the next. I see it now. Thank you. Okay, it's taking a couple seconds for me to move <laughs> to the next one. Yeah, it may uh, take a second. No problem. No problem. I'm going to look at the chat meanwhile. Uh, what is the link to the database? Yes. Don, I believe I still can't click the next slide, okay? I see, I, you click, click remote, okay, now maybe. All right, there we go, yes, I do, I can see it. All right, uh, so here we see another uh, hangout with folks from Lesotho and Swaziland, two tiny monarchies in the middle of South Africa. And these countries, my students, the first question they had, uh, you know, uh, is your king mean or is your king nice? And then the folks said that they drink buffalo milk because they have water milk, uh, I mean, uh, water buffaloes in their countries. In our country, we drink cow milk mostly. So it was quite a, you know, you could do a compare and contrast activity that you could do at higher levels. And I saw in the chat, some people asking questions about novice levels. Yes, you can use this with novice levels. You just prepare them and I'll show you how you prepare them before you call them because you just don't want to call somebody and then your kids are blank. That's why what I do is before I start this and the start of the school year, I brainstorm with my kids. I have a Google form that all kids have access to that they add questions to throughout the year. So we build on these questions because otherwise it becomes the same thing every time. The kids wanna know how old are you? Do you use Instagram? Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Do you live north or south of the equator? But every week, we, every six weeks we have a different theme. So if we have food, then we're gonna add 10 to 20 questions about food in there. And I will randomly pick kids and I have all these resources. You can reach out to us. We have lists of questions prepared in Spanish, in French, and in other languages. So I wanna just show you a couple more examples and then I will go into the details of how to do this. This is a hangout with a classroom in Bangladesh where kids had to walk to talk to the students after school because of the time zones for an hour to get to school. So kids were just so moved, incredibly moved. Uh, and that's why I tell people, why do we do this? We do this so kids can empathize with what's going on around the world. Yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic in the United States, but still we are far more blessed in this country than folks are maybe in India or in other parts of the world. So for my kids to empathize and then turn it into a reflection when I'll show you another example where they met a refugee from one of the countries that is being affected by global climate change, the reflections had questions like, Mr. Patel, why don't they have anything on their walls? And then in the case of the refugee, now this is, I mean, I'll talk about the refugee in a, sec a couple seconds. This is an author. We have plenty of bilingual authors. This lady, she's a monolingual author in an ELL classroom. She is from Alaska and she was speaking to the kids about the Iditarod. She was in her kitchen reading a book to the kids from a kitchen. And I didn't even know, considering I'm an English language learner, I didn't know how to pronounce the word I did a rod. So uh, my kids taught me many a times, you know, my kids would joke with me. They're like, uh, you know, don't correct him. He's a foreigner. So they, do, they try not to correct me. But here's uh, an, an actor from the Nepalese film industry. We've got another mystery hangout with a classroom in New Zealand where students uh, took their atlases or took their globes, took their maps. And just like what you experienced today, they went through a mystery hangout. Then when they were making fun of diseases like Ebola or Zika, I brought in health experts from those two countries to talk to the kids. So kids knew the importance of not making fun of something so grave. Now, this is a Peruvian author. Many a times in my class, because of the huge class sizes, I would have issues with scaffolding and differentiating instruction for each student. 
So I paired my students with specific people like this lady. She's from Peru. She's a Peruvian American author of children's books. And she came and read to the kids. She asked them questions and she did what I asked her to do of the kids. So we have plenty of volunteers right now, especially because of the pandemic. So I'm gonna, uh, this is another example of how a connection can lead to action civics. So these students connected with the CEO of Community Recycling, a national organization that takes substances and things from the United States and recycles and sends it to 50 different countries. So my students, the first question was like, wow, they're like, what can we do being in a small community in Oklahoma City? We don't have the resources. What can we do to help you? The guy said, I'm going to send you a box with shipping paid for. And the kids put in their old clothes and old shoes and shipped it to him. A month later, he calls us back from Washington, D.C. And he's like, hey, Bella, look at your shoes. They're going to the Philippines. So for the first time, kids at a Title I school, they had realized that you don't have to be rich to make a difference in someone's life, that we can all make a difference in someone's life. So lots of these activities that are leading to action civics, like these kids from the Kiribati Islands, Pacific Atolls that are going underwater because of global climate change. My kids in the reflection the next day had drawn a bed that they said, Mr. Patel, ¿Puedo compartir esa cama con, mi, con unos de esos niños? Can I share my bed? Can I share my bed with one of these kids in uh, these countries that are being affected because of global climate change. So here we go. Uh, another gentleman from the kingdom of Bhutan, a tiny country in between China and India, that's a monarchy. And an interesting fact about this country that they measure GDH or gross domestic happiness of their citizens. They actually measure the happiness of their citizens. So cool. The king of Bhutan even introduced the World Happiness Day at the United Nations. And now they are no longer a monarchy, but a democracy because the king wants their people to choose their people, uh, uh, choose their elected leaders. So then we introduced this program to Exploring Languages, a course that's being offered in several parts of the United States, where kids, before they take a high school or middle school credit class, they explore different languages and cultures. So in this particular class, we introduced kids to people from 100 countries. They played mystery hangout, they got to know the geography, they got to know what languages they speak. And so that when they go to high school, the 10 or 12 languages that we offered in Oklahoma City uh, public schools, they had an option. They just didn't wanna pick Spanish because, oh, Spanish is something that's being offered by all the schools. They pick something they wanted to pick. So if you need this uh, in your exploring languages class, we're more than welcome to help you with this. We offer field trips to as close as a police station or a fire station, or in this left picture, as you can see, a lady taking them on a tour of cultural artifacts in a market in Colombia. I forgot the name of the city, but again, I'm gonna skip through some of these slides so we can go into uh, the details. These are kids who got so excited and bonded to my kids that before their star exam or before their state exam, the kids from India and from the UK called my students and they're like, good luck on your exam. So it's also about building relationships and friendships. You can see this, the excitement of the kids in Mexico and the excitement of the kids in Dallas, Texas. Uh, plenty of other examples of classroom students engaging with folks from all around the globe. I'm not gonna focus much of my time on this because now it's time for the last uh, 10, 15. I'm gonna skip through this one too. And we're not gonna take this Twitter chat, Don, uh, but we're gonna go through a couple things before we go to the Twitter chat, okay? So this is another program we offer to teachers in Texas and Oklahoma. They can request our nonprofit to send people physically to their schools. We cannot offer this to other states, but to every other state in the United States, we can offer our virtual speakers any time of the year. So yes, I will be sharing the URL in just a couple of minutes as we get there. I know you all are very excited and you want to know the URL. So let me share the URL and stuff. Now, these are other programs we offer. We have a school to college pipeline initiative for at-risk youth that we uh, pair with uh, mentors of color from different parts of the world. We have our Global Ambassadors Leadership Institute. This institute is open to teachers, students, anybody at any age who wants to become a global ambassador. It's a scholarship we offer. And then the graduates, if they're under uh, 30 years of age, we send them as delegates to the Youth Assembly of the United Nations. If they're over 30 years of age, we offer them other opportunities in international learning and uh, global diplomacy. So this another program that we offer is professional development, which is what I'm doing right now with Avant and with MFLA. If you ever need me to provide a professional development at a conference or at one of your staff development meetings, 
if they're local, we don't charge any honorarium and we'll do it for you at any time of the year that you need us. So uh, again, these are some examples of our impact in some of the states this particular year, Virginia, Arizona, Wyoming, Oklahoma, Missouri, uh, neat examples. And we are also reciprocity, recipro recipro I cannot say that word, but we are reciprocating the, the generosity of our volunteers in their countries. So we are pairing Americans with people in Argentina, in South Africa, in India. So if any of you are interested to give some of your time, maybe 15, 30 minutes of your time on one of, one of the days, we do not uh, force our volunteers uh, to, to give all of their time to, to a classroom every week but we have so many volunteers that we always find somebody for you each week. So our work has been recognized uh, nationally now, internationally. Um, uh oh, it just went by, okay. We host an annual program called the Global Citizen Awards Gala, honoring global citizens, uh, honored by the United Nations now, uh, and we work in close partnership with the United Nations Academic Impact. Another program that I'm gonna offer to you guys that you can apply for too, we have many grants and scholarships that we offer over $10,000 to $15,000 in many grants that can be applied by anybody in the United States or abroad. So I'll be sharing a link where you can access all of this. Now, last thing I'm gonna share before we go to the link is how I learned Spanish. It's gonna take a couple minutes. In 2011, I was in college to become a mathematics teacher, high school mathematics teacher. Now I'm certified to teach high school mathematics. I'm from India, I do not speak Spanish. In 2011, I had the opportunity of traveling to the Dominican Republic, just like every other young person who wants to go to Cancun or Puerto Vallarta and they want to spend spring break there. I wanted to spend my spring break in a country to make a difference there. But I was like, I don't speak Spanish. How am I gonna get a job there? So uh, my friends laughed at me. They're like, you don't speak Spanish. How are you gonna find a job in the Dominican Republic? You won't believe me. I sent a letter using Google Translate to 50 random people on Facebook that looked like they were professionals telling them, hey, I've got all this expertise working with sea turtles and elephants and I wanna share with your kids and I want a job. Out of the 50 people, nobody responded except for one person, the chief of staff of the first lady of the Dominican Republic. He responds to me and he's like, I really like your perseverance. I can't believe you're trying so hard. And then the first thing he says to me is the letter you wrote to me is grammatically incorrect. So I put, ha ha, yes, I know because I use Google Translate. So he started laughing and he's like, Mr. Patel, I admire your perseverance and I wanna give you a job in our social pro projects uh, in the first lady's office. And in 2011, I went to the Dominican Republic, got a small stipend and they paid for my hotel, my flight. And I never met the first lady, but I got to work with kids in juvenile detention centers, in primary, elementary, middle schools and high schools across the country, teaching them more about my culture. Now, seven years later, something special happened. 2011, I travel. Seven years later in March, 2018, I was nominated for uh, the Global Teacher Prize, which is a million dollar teacher prize that's given to one teacher that has made an outstanding contribution to their profession. Every year, the Warkey Foundation picks 50 teachers to be in the top 50 of the world. And all 50 get a full expenses paid trip to Dubai where you get to meet heads of state or Bollywood and Hollywood actors and actresses. Now, I was not interested in the actors and actresses. I've never been interested in them. But I was interested in two secret service agents that I was sipping a margarita with under a palm tree. And these guys were speaking Spanish like, hola, como tu ta, que lo que mi mano. And I was like, man, these guys are speaking Spanish from the Dominican Republic. So I turned around and I talked to them. I was like, hey, I learned my Spanish in the DR and I spoke to them in Dominican Spanish. They were like, no way this guy spoke Spanish in the Dominican Republic. So the next uh, thing they told me, I showed them some pictures from my timeline from 2011. And they're like, you know what? We're secret service agents to the same first lady. She's right now the vice president of the Dominican Republic. So the next morning, they introduced me to her. But there were so many heads of state, but I thought it was special for me to go and say thank you to her. So I went ahead and said thank you to her. And she is just, ever since she's been following me on Twitter and Instagram, and I visited her country to train uh, hundreds of teachers in her country. 
And she, in her Instagram post, the last thing she wrote, she was like, Akash is un orgullo dominicano. He's a Dominican pride, not an American or an Indian pride, but he's a pride of our land because he learned his Spanish here and now teaches vulnerable communities. In April 2018, after I came back from Dubai, my life changed and my twin brother passed away to a plane crash. So this is my only brother. He was 20, uh, 26 years old when he passed away. And when my brother passed away, uh, that's when I was in this phase in my life that I was so sad that I wanted to turn the journey that I had been leading of global experiences and honor my brother's memory. So that's when I got together with my friend, Oklahoma State Teacher of the Year, John Hazel, my uh, boss in Dallas, Amy Anderton, Director of uh, World Languages, and my very close friend from Guatemala, Guatemalan American, Hilda Xavier, the three of us got together and we created the Happy World Foundation because my brother loved wearing glasses but popping out the lenses. So we put those glasses on the world and we created this nonprofit. And ever since, uh, we have created a program where my, that my students led while I was gone, uh, distributed over 10,000 meals to the homeless called Happy Meals. Uh, we created a nonprofit clinic that has helped create over 54 nonprofits across the country and help them with startup funds or startup uh, training or help them with IRS paperwork. So if anybody needs help with that, we are also helping out at no cost for any nonprofit entrepreneur who wants to start their nonprofit organization. Then I was invited by President Clinton uh, to discuss global education with him and the first democratically elected president of Africa, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of uh, Liberia. And I got to visit the Clinton Presidential Center with two of my students and um, got to meet the Nobel Peace Prize laureate, uh, Juan Manuel Santos. And he and I led a panel in Dubai on how the work that we are doing is leading to peace education because all of what we do right now of connecting students is leading to a more peace, equitable, peaceful, equitable, and a joyous world where kids can li live in peace. Now that's the president of Costa Rica where I got the opportunity to work with 100,000 sea turtles. So I got to meet her too. And uh, this is my professor, my only professor of color from college. And she and I were recognized as the Oklahoma State Teacher of the Year and Multicultural State Teacher of the Year and Multicultural Citizen of the Year. Now, let's get to the part where how you can access our resources. Um, again, we've received uh, numerous honors for the work, including a Human Rights Award, but I'm gonna skip through this so we can get here. Now, the easiest way for you to access, and I'm also gonna share my screen so you can see step-by-step step how you can request a speaker. We have 1,500 speakers. I cannot put a database of 1,500 people with their private information like their phone number and their email addresses on our website for somebody to hack. So because of the privacy concerns of the number of people, we have developed a team of people that will respond to you within 24 hours. So if you email us at happywellfoundationinc at gmail.com or at this email, which is my email, in 24 hours, we will respond to you and connect you with somebody like Katie or Elissa or Sophia. And Edgar, you know, a few months ago, we connected him to a set of twins from Spain. So you just tell us the region, you tell us the topic, give us some brief description that, hey, Akash, or hey, Mr. Patel, I want somebody from th these particular regions this month, and I have availability, and give us some options. So because we have so many volunteers, give us some options. Hey, I have availability at this time on Monday or Thursday and we will fill those time slots for you in 24 hours. So the easiest way for you to do that is by going and sending us a WhatsApp, which is if you use WhatsApp, it's a plus one, four, oh, five, four, seven, four, three, three, one, zero. You can also text that number. You can email us or you can use any of these platforms. You, uh, you can DM me on LinkedIn. You can DM our foundation on, go to our website. You can find the email there. You can go to our Instagram, very quickly, we will connect you with people on Instagram or on Foundation Happy on our Twitter or on our Facebook page. Now I'm going to share my screen so you can see our nonprofit's website and that particular program that's going to be of interest to you. And that's going to be going to be my last part. So you cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Okay. Okay. I will stop. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, maybe. 
Uh, yes, I see some people that uh, you will be, uh, you need the survey. Yes, Ms. Dawn will be sharing the survey with you guys in, in a couple minutes because we are right there. And I'm gonna answer some questions, okay? So right after I show you the website, I'm gonna answer the questions and here we go. I'm just gonna share with you the Global Connect database. Here we go. Here, I also put it in the chat. There's the link, you can just click on it. It will tell you, hey, please email this number or text us or DM us on one of the platforms. Guys, come on, each of you use Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, easiest way, use any of those platforms. It's not important for you to send us a, an email. You can DM us on any of the platforms it will help you out. So here we go. Here's the website. Um, I'll go up here. It's under programs. You will see Global Connect. And it tells you that even if you want to volunteer, you can fill this form out. And if you do not want to volunteer and you want to request a volunteer, here's our email address. You can use that email, you can text us, you can DM us. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing now, Don. you can share the survey. I'm gonna to go to the chat and answer questions, okay? <laughs> okay, I think you have to stop sharing All first. right, stop sharing. Here we go. Okay, I will go back to sharing. And I, I think we have, um, a million questions for you. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go straight to Edgar and Michael. Do you guys wanna report in some of the questions you're seeing? Okay, well, the excitement continues here on Twitter. I think Akash that you're going to be super busy because a lot of people would like to use your services. <laughs> I love um, being busy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, by the way, I used uh, Akash helped me with my first graders and we had a great experience with that. But uh, some people also would like to know how they could apply this on, the, on different uh, proficiency levels. Oh, that's a great question. I mean, it's just scaffolding. It's just you as a teacher lead this discussion. Our volunteers would not know. Now, yesterday I introduced Erica Trussoni, a lady from Argentina to the AP Institute, to a group of AP teachers. Now, they're not going to be doing this mystery hangout asking questions like, you know, basic questions like, what's your name, how old you are. You modify that assignment to, to meet the level, to meet the level of the students where they are. And that's why, you know, when you email us, not only do we connect you to the speaker, we will attach lists of questions, graphic organizers that you can use that teachers have been using in our network. So you have the power to modify this lesson. Once you finish the mystery hangout, Let's say you're discussing the types of government. Give your kids a graphic organizer that does compare and contrast. Let our speaker talk about monarchy and Bhutan and let your students compare it to democracy in the United States. That should work for an AP level student or should work for a Spanish three, Spanish four or level three, level four languages, depending on what the TEKS or the standards for that lesson are. So again, all of this can be tweaked to meet the level. Now I saw in the group, somebody asked questions about a novice level. So for novice to help you prepare, again, I'm telling you, when you start this, do not just throw out a speaker at your students. Your students will be blank. Sit down with your students one class period. Brainstorm by you leading that brainstorming session. Do not hand the kids the questions. If I give you 100 questions that we've prepared and give it to the kids, the kids are not going to take any responsibility. But when you tell kids, hey, we're going to meet somebody who's a mystery person, what questions can you think of? Let the kids imagine, let the kids do the thinking and the Bloom's taxonomy thing of evaluating or asking and, you know, let them use those verbs and let them try to come up with questions that they want to ask. That way they take responsibility into creating this process. And then if they don't come up with some, you can use our sample with your students. But please spend at least one full class period to make sure that your students are well prepared with our speaker. Thank Other questions, say. Edgar and Michael? I was going to yes. say, I think you answered just a few questions that I know I saw in the chat. Michael, what other questions are you seeing for Akash uh -huh. here? And Michael, before you go, just a second. I hear somebody ask, do the, does the teacher get a chance to meet the guest before? We connect you with the speaker on email or via, you know, whatever platform you use. Let's say you're contacting us on Facebook. We'll connect you both on Facebook. The approved platforms you and your district use are like Zoom or I don't know, whatever platform in my district, they even allow us to use Facebook video calling. So you are 
I reconnect you with the person several days before. You have the ability to reach out to them and be like, hey, can I talk to you for a few minutes before the actual day and get to talk to them or meet them or say something to them? Of course, you have the ability to do that. Michael? Um, yes, you had to answer the questions. There were lots of questions of how they could become a volunteer or get a volunteer, which you answered. But uh, Samantha would like to know, would you recommend connecting to the same group all year or person or varying it with different groups? She says, I think uh, the same group would help foster relationships. Relationship building. I love that. You know, I have had a couple French classrooms in Virginia that have, like, like today you met Elisa from France and from Algeria. She's a Fulbright scholar uh, sent by her government to the United States for research. She has connected with these two classrooms for the entire year. Now we don't recommend, I mean, it depends on you as a teacher. If you want somebody who should be connecting with your students every week or every other week, we can provide the same person for you. But if you want a different set of people, we, because you know, if you're talking about a French classroom or a Spanish classroom or languages that are spoken in multiple countries, Give your kids the opportunity to experience different accents, different regions where, and their geographies and their cultures where they're spoken. So yes, you could use them with one person throughout the year, or you could diversify it a little bit so kids get exposed to different regions and different parts of the globe. And then one more question that I did see that I think several people had is, can you also request um, a certain topic or a, someone who has a specialization in something to be the guest speaker? Absolutely. That's a fantastic question. Like somebody asked about COVID-19. During the pandemic, when the schools closed, the teacher wanted to do about uh, something about how our country is managing their quarantines. So we connected them with doctors or medical students from different countries that are professionals, that have the scientific knowledge, and they can provide accurate or somewhat accurate information to the students. So it was great. Uh, they asked for specific professionals. We will find you specific professionals. So if you need somebody with specific expertise, we have plenty of people to dig into. And sometimes, you know, I, I, I really find it funny. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, hey, do you know somebody from this country that I... I, you know, I'm quite geographically smart, but I had never heard of the country. So for the first time, I was like, wow, I don't really have any speaker from this country. What do I do? So in our network, we have our own networks of WhatsApp groups and, you know, Facebook groups. I just posted it and they tagged 20 people from that country. So because we have such a wide network, if we ever don't have somebody simply by posting it, we have so many volunteers that will tag somebody else. And then somebody said, how do you use this during the pandemic? I mean, how do you not use this during the pandemic? The pandemic is making you all want to use technology. And this is the time, if you're putting it on your resume, you're tech savvy and you know how to use technology in the classroom to, to uh, you know, really promote yourself to a school district that yeah, you're tech savvy and you know how to use techno technological tools. If you can make a phone call to your neighbor or to your mom, you can make a phone call to somebody in Lesotho or somebody in India. It's that effortless for you. It takes a few minutes of your time and your energy because we are doing most of the digging and finding the persons. You're simply facilitating this. So yes, this is a great opportunity because schools are uncertain in the fall. Please make use of our resources. And during these times, these unprecedented times of closures all around the globe, we have hundreds of more new volunteers who want to give back because they're tired of being at home and not doing anything. I think it's outstanding that this is a way to find a true silver lining to the situation we're in and to really capitalizing on the technology skills that we've all gotten better at <laughs> yet using in this situation and, and be able to create an authentic, I guess, scenario to use language that's you could not get more authentic. So. I just cannot thank you enough, Akash, for sharing all of this with us today. I know you're going to get questions in our survey um, because you will be able to see those and get back with people. So I know we're not gonna be able to get to everyone's question today, but you guys, please feel free to add your comments for Akash, your questions, other suggestions or ideas that you have for us. We'd love to hear them. 
Um, and I do want to just say again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today, Akash. We're so glad. And to your guest speakers, they were outstanding. It was so good to see them. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And let us know how we can be of service at Happy World to any of your communities. Wonderful. Before we leave today, I know, Edgar, you were going to share some information with us from MFLA. Do you want to talk to us about your fall conference? Yes, I will let Michael uh, tell us a little bit about what is going to happen with our fall conference this uh, December 1st. Yes, uh, everybody from the Mississippi area, our fall conference will be virtual uh, this fall. 2020 and it'll be December the 1st through the 5th and we're uh, sending out information actually we've already sent out information and we'll be sending out more with some specifics so please send in presentation uh, abstracts for presentations and also uh, sign up to be part of it it's going to be a wonderful time thank you so it's good to be able to get the news out there about that I think we're all going to be able to take advantage of lots of virtual conferences this fall. So we may be able to continue to learn together across borders, um, both here in the US and internationally. So that's a good thing. So you guys make sure you check that out um, so you can continue to, to learn from MFLA. I do, let me see, do you wanna just remind everyone, I have put the link to the survey in the chat. You will also have an opportunity to catch that link when you leave the Zoom or in the email tomorrow. So don't worry if you miss it right this minute. Um, also had some good ideas and questions that were posted um, on Twitter with the hashtag empowering with languages. And you can look for the email tomorrow for a copy of Akasha's presentation along with a PDF of the chat. And um, you can also go back and watch this again if you wanna show it to an administrator or a colleague or share it with your team. Um, this is going to be recorded and uploaded on our YouTube channel. So you'll have access to that as well. So that is all of our time for today. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to spend a full week with MFLA this week. We have one more webinar coming up in this series on Monday. And so please don't forget to join us Monday. We'll have um, Ryan Smith and TJ Trochi from Nevada who will be presenting on biliteracy. So make sure that you sign up for that one Monday and I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend.